Hello, uh, today we have as our special guest Ms. Mr. Jean-Jacques Anou, uh, Oscar-winning um, director, um, and welcome to Mongolia. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, thank you for uh, receiving our invitation for this exclusive interview as well. It's a pleasure for me to be mm -hmm. here and talk to you. Mm -hmm. So um, we will talk about mainly about your filmmaking career and about your movies, about how uh, you depict certain things that you want to deliver to mm -hmm. viewers. So my first question will be, um, you have made several visits to Mongolia, and this one I heard is the third visit. Yes. And by the invitation of the Mongolian president. Right. Yes, and many have expectation that a uh, world acclaimed director will do a movie about Mongolia. More on that, please. What did you say? But um, many have expectation in Mongolia that yes. you might uh, do a movie about Mongolia. Well, you know, M Mongolia is a very exceptionally beautiful uh, place in the world. Uh, and it's a place that makes me dream since I was a, a child. Mm. Um, because, you know, in my country, uh, we've been invaded several times by people from that region. But strangely enough, we um, have been told since we were children that a great king of yours, Attila, mm -hmm. uh, was um, a very wise man that could behave as a gentleman. Mm -hmm. So in France, we have, uh, you know, admiration for the great, for those great conquerors. At the same time, respect for the dignity. Mm -hmm. of uh, that person and of course you know we know about the uh, empire of Genghis Khan um, a formidable thing for a small group of people to have such an empire and we'll see running China for a number of centuries so of course you know uh, there is great respect fascination and um, this is one of the reason I fell in love with the book Wolf Totem, mm -hmm. uh, although Wolf Totem doesn't, uh, it, it's an inner Mongolia story, uh, but I visited Mongolia r right away because it's the same culture. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, I've been absolutely fascinated, not only by the land, but by, by the people, you know. I think people are very um, welcoming here. Uh, I have very warm memories of my first visit. I spent uh, two to three weeks mm -hmm. in the region, uh, especially in the uh, eastern part of, uh, uh, of the land, and um, visited in those days Ulaanbaatar twice. I met a number of historians here mm -hmm. uh, and started doing my research. Um, I, I bought a number of books uh, here. There was a French library uh, French bookshop where I bought a number of very very good books on uh, Mongol culture so you know that was a, a very positive moment then uh, you're asking me if I would like to come back and shoot yes the answer is yes mm, uh, that's really good news <laughs> <laughs> yes because um, I, I, I feel good in this country you know uh, and I know the country wants to do more films mm -hmm. uh, I know that uh, the officials here want to help local filmmakers to make either TV series or movies. It is, of course, difficult in a country where you have only 20 screens mm. or 40, let's say 40 uh, screens, while, you know, um, uh, countries like America have uh, 60,000. Uh, so you can't compare, you don't have a market here. Yes, we have quite small market. Compared yeah. to bigger markets like Hollywood or even the Chinese it's, it's, market, right? You know, it's impossible to compare mm -hmm. because in China they are building 18 screens a day. A day. A day. Wow. Here you've got 20 screen period. Yes. So it's not the same league. Therefore, you know, this is a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, but what you have is you've got many television screens mm -hmm. and uh, you've got viewers that speak Mongol uh, not only in Mongolia but in Inner Mongolia and other places in Russia so uh, you, you, you can show movies in Mongol 
And of course, you can do movies in Mongolia for the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. That is more complicated because the world of cinema today is very dependent on marketing. And marketing costs a lot of money. Yes. And you have to always question yourself is, are the teenagers that are the people to, who go to cinema nowadays, are they going to see a Mongol movie uh, the, the Friday it opens? Or do they prefer some kind of video game, uh, big American movies with explosions and uh, uh, lots of uh, spaceships? That's a question, you know. So it's just mm -hmm. a difficult situation. Uh, cinema, I feel very difficult. But what I know is that the country wants to attract uh, filmmakers from abroad mm -hmm. for movies to be shot here mm -hmm. because you've got great landscapes. Yes, we do. Uh, magnificent. Yes. The problem is infrastructure. Infrastructure. So, so, so you know, it's it, it's not an easy, not an easy thing. Yes, and on infrastructure, I, I think the problems arouse even for the equipment, the sure. tools used into this uh, sh shooting the film, right? For the cinematography, it's really hard. For example, procure the right equipment, bring them all here. It all costs a lot of money, right? Yeah, well, you know, it depends what kind of equipment. Uh, cameras are fine because it's yes. not too big. But if you need cranes, if you need uh, specific helicopters, mm -hmm. uh, also what you have to think is accommodation. You know, if you, my unit for Wolf Totem was 600 people. Uh, and plus the accommodation for the wolves, right? Yeah, so, but that we, we, we mm -hmm. had to do because there is no hotel for wolves in mm -hmm. <laughs> that I know. But, uh, you know, you... you, you the film industry is this bizarre industry where we, we often need wilderness, but mm -hmm. close to an hotel, mm -hmm. you see? So, so it's a contradiction almost. Yes. Um, and uh, I've been discussing this with the Minister of Culture, with uh, um, some of the people from the Parliament. Uh, they're very serious mm -hmm. about um, promoting c cinema in Mongolia. And, uh, I personally will do my very best to uh, to help because I love. I must say, I, after this movie, you know, I have even a greater respect for M Mongols and Mongolia, Mongol culture. Mm -hmm. So it's something that's in my heart. It's uh, easy for me to tell my colleagues how beautiful a country it is and how friendly uh, Mongols are towards uh, our industry. Mm -hmm. Well, that's uh, really pleasing to hear <laughs> that from a very great director like you about our Mongolian culture and Mongolian people. So uh, I can understand that we have uh, attracted you, attracted your attention in some way, right? So you just have mentioned that you have met, uh, yesterday you have met the higher up officials. Right. And what were the exact uh, discussion held yesterday about promoting, you said, Mongolia through the Mongolian movie, right? Well, you know, the, 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 there are two aspects. Is a, Promoting through movies, you need to have movies that have success. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you get a success from a movie that talk about Mongolia? This is complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, because the, the word Mongolia is full of dream for, for audiences. But for cinema, the competition is very difficult because you've got to fight against blockbusters mm -hmm. coming from America uh, or a few comedies that would come from, you know, Europe uh, or America. So uh, it, it's not easy. The, the other thing that uh, uh, the official are thinking of is to make Mongolia a film-friendly uh, place to attract film crews from outside mm -hmm. by finding a few incentives like subsidies or, mm -hmm. uh, because you know, in the world today, you have to see that there is a lot of competition. A lot of countries want to attract f filmmakers. I can see for myself, you know, when I have a project, I get a f number of phone calls from Hungary, England, Italy, uh, New Mexico, uh, British Columbia. They all want to see the, a film crew mm -hmm. because it's, it's good for promoting the land, saying, hey, this movie has been shot in, in this place. So how do you get 
filmmaker convinced that this mm. is the place, the place. Well, of course, you, you have to have the proper setting, the mm -hmm. proper land, but also, you know, the proper equipment. If it's a helicopter movie, for instance, do you have helicopters here available? I don't know, I just know. Mm -hmm. But I know you have a lot just of Just for instance, right? Eh? Just for an instance. Uh, yes, for right. an example, you know, it's a, or the, the, the request can be very diverse. Uh, do you have a, a, a big uh, river uh, where we can do a naval fight? Do you have boats? Uh, or, on the contrary, do you have the, uh, a forest, a big forest, um, where our people, our actors can get lost. It's very diverse. So one of the incentive, one, one of the appeal is always now in the world today, uh, competition in terms of where it is the most convenient and the cheapest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. You know, because this is the rule. Um, and many, many countries compete by giving rebates, oh. by giving tax, uh, they're going to give the tax back. Like if you go to a duty-free shop, you know, if yes. you buy something... The you tax refund. Ta right? Tax refund. Okay. Things like that. It, it's a variety of incentives. Uh, therefore, um, the, I've, I've seen the members of parliament and the minister very seriously exploring mm -hmm. what the other countries are doing in order to be in good shape for competition. Okay. But of course, you know, it's also a faraway country. For America, it's far away. Yes. For China, it's closed. Uh, or for Russia, but Russia doesn't do, doesn't probably need to go to Mongolia unless it's cheaper. You know, yes. it's each movie, each project has to be analyzed. Mm -hmm. um, and I also talked about uh, a film commission. Film commission is a place where any producer can call, and where the, uh, they would get the answers. What's the cost of a grip? Uh, you know, what's the cost of a cinematographer here? Uh, what kind of equipment do you have? Uh, how many rooms do you have available near the mountains? Etc. 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 And possibility also to send some uh, pictures showing what is requested. Mm -hmm. you know, for instance, uh, may request uh, we need a train in the snow ac across a forest. Do you have this? Yes, I, I guess you have that. Mm -hmm. Do you have pictures of that? Okay, send it to the production. They say, oh, good. So in other words, we have to have that data bank already set right. up right. about what opportunities we have, what uh, equipment we have, what we can support with. What actors first you have. Place, right? What actors you have. And plus the actors. Yes, and mm -hmm. what uh, stuntmen, for instance, you know, yes. horse stunt stuntmen, I'm sure mm -hmm. you have a lot of uh, people who could be a very ho good horseman uh, or archery of course you have, you have many uh, uh, aspects here that where you are better than any other country mm -hmm. uh, so that has to be promoted you know mm -hmm. and uh, uh, so, so when you go to festivals you always receive catalog from all, all over the world with people say come to south, uh, southern italy we have rivers, we've got mountain, we've got the sea, we've got uh, beautiful women, beautiful men, uh, we've got uh, uh, super, superb rocks for rock climbing uh, stories, etc, etc. You know, yeah. So we have to create our kind of story, our kind of uh, story to tell to other people, right? Y yes, that's the most difficult, you know, let's, let's face it. The key to, to a, a good film is a good script. And a, what is a good script? It's a script that make a, uh, that will pro provide the, the the base basic for a movie that people are emotion emotional with. You, when, when there is tension, when there is interest, when there is it's like storytelling. You know, some people mm -hmm. start telling you a story after two minutes. You say, "What's the point? What are you telling me? Why? Please stop and finish your story." Some other people you get. And so, and then, and then what happened? So, oh, yes. yeah. So this is the kind of screenplay that you need. Mm -hmm. And usually, you know, in countries that do not have a long tradition of filmmaking, you've got very, very good, very poorly written screenplay mm -hmm. with no tension. They, they, they all say, oh, but it's a great historical character. So it's a guy who, you know, was a king for 
20 years and he married two wives and so what? What happened? Mm -hmm. uh, well, he married two wives, so? Uh, well, they were happy and they gave him child, children. So, there's no tension, there's, mm -hmm. no, there's, there's no story, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, and, and how do you build a story? So you, you, you have to, to have, you know, if you have great novels, mm -hmm. great novels are always well-written novels with a tension. Mm -hmm. And it's even worse for cinema because you have only two hours to tell a story. Mm -hmm. So the, the structure has to be very dense. And uh, then that's, I, I would say, to, to get a great Mongol cinema, you have to, get, to have great Mongol storytellers. Mm -hmm. So, so the storytellers are really important in this <laughs> industry, first of all. And um, in most of the m movies that you have directed, you also uh, play the role in screenplay writing. Always? Always. <laughs> yes. That is always. So mm. uh, what captures you in a novel or in a story that you really want to make a movie about? It's the mood of the moment. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, um, some directors, they reproduce always the same kind of movie. I would get bored doing that. So I like to uh, use the, the, the various interests that I have in life. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've, I've done very diverse movies. Uh, movies with cavemen, uh, movies in Africa, uh, movies with animals, movies with uh, snipers, mm -hmm. movie with a, a story of a young girl in the discovering love in the arm of a Chinese man. Uh, uh, why? Well, because you know it's all uh, the same person who express itself through different aspects of life. You know, directors are normal people. Normal people, they they have a job, but they have also a hobby. Uh, uh, several hobbies, uh, mm -hmm. same for me. You know, I, uh, I have a fascination for nature, for instance, but I also love women. It's not contradictory, <laughs> you know. It's I, life. It, it, well, it, or a fascination also. F I did a movie like uh, called End Me at the Gates, a story of two snipers uh, played by Ed Harris and Jude Law. Um, why? Because it's a hunting. It's a, it's a hunting party. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you know, it, it's already, Wolf Totem is also so very often hu about hunting. Yes. This is one of the fundamentals of, of, of mankind, you know. Mm -hmm. So, as a matter of fact, there are many, many common themes in my movies. But they are hidden. Because when people see a hunt, uh, wolves hunting or wolf looking at a prey at gazelles, they would not necessarily think about a sniper movie. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, it's the same technique. Yes. And it's the same sort of tension. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, it's the same sort of fascination for me. And in order to get the excitement of making a movie, I have to have the impression that I'm, I'm going to discover something new. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm doing a movie like Wolf Totem, not only I have to understand Mongol culture, uh, research Mongol culture, come to your country, meet with a lot of people, but I also have to do the same with Chinese culture. Mm -hmm. Therefore, for a foreigner like me, it's a lot of work, but it's a lot, a lot of fascination. Mm -hmm. uh, then I can really uh, think after, wow, I spent a number of years doing this movie, but I learned a lot and it was great. Yes. It was and fun. I think it's uh, all about learning experience. Yes for everything we do, you do, I do, yes, right? Yes. And in that regard, you have done a lot of research on nomads, on Mongols, sure. and you have visited Mongolia several times. So uh, could you please share uh, your thoughts about Mongolians? Well, you know... Uh, about uh, maybe unique uh, aspects we have. Well, uh, you have and you had, because, you know, it's becoming a, a new country now. It's yes. different. The li life is different. Mm -hmm. People are now, half of the nation is in Ulaanbaatar, mm -hmm. so they're becoming city people. Uh, so uh, what, what I can say is I uh, tried to learn as much as I could of the nomadic life of uh, 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. And, of course, of the past, because this was very, very similar. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm always fascinated with nomadic cultures. 
because I belong to a non-nomadic mm -hmm. culture, to a sedentary culture. But um, I experience nomadic cultures in Africa mm -hmm. a lot. Um, I lived one year in Cameroon, and in northern Cameroon, mm -hmm. you've got a lot of nomadic, and call them Bororo, mm -hmm. uh, who are related to the Maasai. Uh, and I also shot in Kenya, where the Maasai uh, move with their cattle, and they often get into conflict with the uh, peasants. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm familiar with the system and the reason why there is always a bit of a conflict mm -hmm. when you have the two cultures, you know, peasants uh, and herders. And um, what was fascinating in Wolf Totem, it's a, it's a period of time uh, when uh, after Second World War, uh, everywhere in the world, the same mistake was done. Mm -hmm. uh, cutting the forest to, to grow, to have more fields. Mm -hmm. uh, destroying the grassland to try to grow corn or, mm -hmm. or wheat. And, and uh, what was interesting for me, it, has, it had nothing to do with a specific Chinese period. It was at the same time, I was in the Cameroon, and I saw my French friends, uh, the agronomist, mm -hmm. coming there and doing exactly the same mistake for opposite reason, you know. Mm -hmm. It was to, well, not opposite reason, to, to grow more food for a growing population. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it was very interesting for me because, yes, I had to learn a lot about nomadic culture. Yes, I had to learn a lot about cultural revolution in China. But the problem is above that. It's mm -hmm. a general problem of, of a population. Yes, and preserving the nature. And preserving the nature. Right? Mm -hmm. The nature on which we depend. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, I know that you have this uh, complex problem here in Mongolia, yes. where you have a rich underground, mm -hmm. but you also need a beautiful grassland. Uh, so it's a balance. Not too much of this, not, not too little yes. of that. Uh, and in that regard, in like preserving the nature, the environment, uh, nomads, especially Mongol nomads, uh, have done a lot and have developed a lot of um, customs related just to preserving the nature. And I think, um, to my mind, as a part of the audience who saw the wolf totem, I think you have depicted it really clearly mm -hmm. through the wolves and through the relationship of the human and the wolf to preserve that environmental cycle. Th that was the fundamental reason why I wanted to do this movie. Mm -hmm. You know, the, exactly what you said, because it, it's an international problem. It, yes. it, it, it's not only a Chinese problem at all. We, we all are confronted it's to the same thing. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, you know, when I read the novel, I said to myself, well, that, that ha is happening in Canada as well, mm -hmm. who's supposed to be a very clean country. But no, they're destroying their forest to, to make paper. Mm -hmm. So they cut trees and it, it's, it's becoming very ugly. Or, or sh shale oil, you know, and, and they ruin the whole land. So uh, I was fascinated to, to do this movie uh, with, within the Mongol region, inside the border of China, uh, addressing the specific problem of China in those days, but uh, with an, uh, uh, knowing that it was absolutely global and universal. Mm -hmm. And this is why the movie, you know, is uh, doing so well uh, in foreign countries. It's because people understand immediately that it mm -hmm. could be happening in Germany, uh, France or Italy. Yes, it is depicted really clearly. Everyone could instantly understand what's going on uh, with the story you want to tell to the audience. And it clearly captures with the cinematography, mm -hmm. the great cinematography mm -hmm. and the great music score mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. and the great uh, direction, I think. And um, on to the next question. You have a very clear depiction of one message with every, each and every movie you have directed. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the conveying is very natural. Mm -hmm. 
uh, you use a lot of cultural um, aspects. Yes. And uh, plus, it, it, you don't hide anything. Um, well, it's like clearly out there. I'm trying, yes. Well, you know, that, that I don't know. I'm just spitting out my beliefs mm -hmm. uh, and my sincerity. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm not trying to cheat. It's too, too complicated to cheat. I know. People are not fools, right? And uh, the audience especially. And you are making a lot of international movies and y involving Hollywood actors, involving local actors, and you have placed your movie locations all over the world. Yes, yes. Yes, and it uh, requires a lot of understanding, a lot of mutual understanding of the film crew, of the locals, and the support from the government, I guess. Mm -hmm. So how is that can make into a whole one piece? Well, you know, it's easy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, if, it, it's very easy because if you go to some place with the desire to understand mm -hmm. the place, therefore the people, if you have appetite, food always feels good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and you know, when you go in the desire to learn, the only way to learn is to love. Mm -hmm. Therefore, uh, sometimes it happened that I had a hard time to love, therefore I didn't do the movie. But, it, you know, when I came to Mongolia, I love the way people are. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love the evenings I had in, in the years, you know, <laughs> drinking the spirit, the singing, the f f way people were friendly. Mm -hmm. And maybe they were friendly as well because they knew I wanted to learn. Mm -hmm. They knew I had respect or authentic respect. And the sincerity. And abs that I can guarantee, of mm -hmm. course. Absolute sincerity. So, excitement. So, you know, when you scout in, in a country, if you're not interested, you would sleep or, or do video games in the back of the car. Yes. If you go there to find a, a great place to shoot, you're like this. Everything is interesting, mm -hmm. you know. So th this is why I'm also changing from one movie to another, because I cannot, you know, you, you don't have a first time twice. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I, I still have a lot of things to discover in a country like Mongolia, mm -hmm. uh, but definitely not uh, the same kind of story. You know, this is why right now I'm getting so many animal stories. Mm -hmm that I don't want to do animal movies. I have, I have, by coincidence, I did two before, mm -hmm. uh, but it's by coincidence, it's because, you know, I started, my first movie was in Africa. And in Africa, I met a lot of people who were specialized in studying um, tribes. Mm -hmm. And it gave me the idea to make a movie in the ancient times of mankind mm -hmm. uh, called Quest for Fire. Quest and for that movie, Quest for Fire, I had to learn body language, mm -hmm. uh, which is something I didn't know uh, in those days. You know, for instance, am I the same person like this or like that? Of mm -hmm. course not. Uh, uh, what was the, bo the common body language in those days? <laughs> 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 you know, yes. uh, something which was ape-like, mm -hmm. probably, most probably. Therefore, I had to study mammal behavior. Mm -hmm. And then I realized how much I was inside myself very close to a bear, a tiger, a wolf, and probably a pigeon, a, an eagle. And because I started learning a lot about animal behavior, only to understand that my behavior was not very far away, you know. And therefore, it goes with this th thinking that I have is, although I'm a Frenchman, mm -hmm. I can live very happily in Hollywood. Uh, I can enjoy my life here, uh, going in small vi villages uh, in Mongolia. I can 
uh, enjoy being in China. So, so you know, this is an. Uh, I, I try to be as open as I can, because I think I'm benefiting from all those influences. Mm -hmm. And it's true that uh, you know, after uh, after making a movie called The Bear uh, 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 about a be uh, the story of a bear, I immediately went to something entirely different: the lover, mm -hmm. story of a young woman. Uh, who discovers love in the arm of a very dignified Chinese man. But as a matter of fact, I learned so much directing an animal that to direct sex scene, mm -hmm. uh, it was a big help. Because it deals with instincts. Yes, instincts, basic instincts. Basic, insti basic instincts. And, and you know, uh, uh, there's nothing bad about it. Uh, now, I value the beauty of instincts. Mm -hmm. After all, this magnificent impulse of love, desire, carnal desire. It's fundamental of life. If there is no desire, there is, we, the species will die. Mm -hmm. And apparently it's not the case, you know. The next question will be about the actors. Uh -huh. So what main traits you seek in the actor to play a main character in your movie? For example, why Jude Law in The Enemies at the Gates? Why Brad Pitt at the Seven Years in Tibet? And why Anghnyum as the wife of the herdsman? Well, you know, very dif different kind of requirements. Uh, for uh, Enemy at the Gates, I wanted people with great eyes mm -hmm. because a sniper is a person that doesn't move and looks for a long, long time. And therefore, I picked two people, Ed Harris and Jude Law, mm -hmm. who have magnificent eyes. Because it's a movie about eyes. Mm -hmm. Of course, they had to be great actors as well, which they are. So I, I, I met a lot of them, uh, but definitely Jude Law was above all the others. Plus he's a very uh, intelligent man, a very easy man to direct. Mm -hmm. uh, and very beautiful to look at, you know, <laughs> which is good for you, but it's also good for me when I have, you know, a good-looking man uh, in front of me. I am more appealed, uh, and I would look at this person. I'm, my eyes are attracted by mm -hmm. beauty, you know, mm -hmm. as we all are. Uh, when I'm the saying fascination, right? Yes, when I'm saying beauty, you know, beauty is a very complex thing. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's not necessarily looking like a TV star or like a model on the cover of a magazine. There is a sort of beauty where a, a face can be so strange that it has, it carries a certain beauty. Uh, one of my favorite actors, Ron Perlman, is a guy mm -hmm. who I hire very often. He has a very, very bizarre face, but I find him beautiful because mm -hmm. he, he has so much power yes, that... Yes, and he has been cast like... F three or four times in my four, movie. Four times. Four times, yes, yeah. because I love him. He's, uh, he's fantastic to, to shoot. So now your second question was, why Brad Pitt? Mm -hmm. Well, I needed a charismatic, good, extremely good-looking uh, young man, supposedly from Germany. Mm -hmm. Why was it important? Because this man survived those seven years that he crossed Tibet with very hostile um, locals. Mm -hmm. Locals, they didn't like to see those two mountaineers. Why could he go across? Because of his good looks. Mm. Because he was a very charming guy. And especially women said to their men, don't, don't kill him. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> so that's a, a, a key to it. Now, Anke Nim. A uh, story about Anke Nim is, um, you know, when I decided to go with this movie, of course my Chinese friends uh, always said, this is your decision, but w please meet our famous actresses in mm -hmm. China. I must say, I met, I met them all. Uh, all. I mean, all the, let's say, the 20 most famous actress in mm. China, became my friend. I have great respect for them. I discovered many fantastic uh, Chinese actresses, uh, very talented, but they were not Mongols. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted the Mongols to be Mongols. Yes. And I felt very essential. 
And you know what charmed me? When Anke Nim came to see me in uh, Be Beijing, I saw this beautiful woman. She looked like a model out of Vogue. And uh, then uh, she showed me her iPad. She said, let, let me understand, is, is, this, is this that kind of character that you need? Mm -hmm. And she showed me uh, a woman in a farm, you know, in a yard, milking a cow and then uh, pushing the herd of uh, sheep and uh, oh I said yes exactly that mm -hmm. and she said that was me last week <laughs> I loved it mm -hmm. because it was exactly the character I wanted I wanted someone that could understand the spirit of Mongolia mm -hmm. and that could depict the, a beautiful country woman mm -hmm. from Mongolia and you know what was nice is uh, uh, everyone around me understood that yes, all the Mongols in the movie, and there are many, should be played by Mongol actors. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I did a very long casting session in Inner Mongolia because the story takes place in Inner Mongolia. I couldn't find someone like Anke Nim mm -hmm. in Inner Mongolia. This mm -hmm. is where, why I came here. Uh, uh, and. I, I met um, several actresses, uh, and there was one that was very good for the part as well. Mm -hmm. But I picked Anke Nim because I felt that she was the most appropriate for the part. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm delighted with the performance. Yes, and she blends in really well. Oh, with she's the whole movie, with the whole story, yeah. and the whole message you want to say, right? She, she is a fantastic actress. She is extremely talented. Uh, she has wonderful instincts. She has a level of improvisation that also mm -hmm. that is very remarkable. And um, you know, the camera loves her. She's got beautiful fa facial structure, uh, a very intense and witty eyes. She's yes. very smart. <laughs> no, she's been a delight. She, she, and, and we are getting uh, incredibly great reviews on, on our work everywhere in the world. And I must say that Zhang Rong, the writer of the novel, mm -hmm. sent me a lovely, lovely letter after seeing the movie. He loved the movie, cried a lot, etc. And he said, the best actor in the movie is Anke Nim. Wow, that's yeah. really great appraisal, yeah. I think, from the uh, author of the book. Yeah, especially he didn't want that character, because oh. this character is almost non-existent non -existent in, the, in the novel. Mm -hmm. I perceived mm -hmm. that the reality was probably uh, different, uh, that he didn't want to tell things. But I, when I read the book, I, I felt that he was very attracted by this woman. Mm -hmm. uh, so I invented a larger story with the two of them. Mm -hmm. Thank them you for your fascinating story about yourself, about your experience, and about, I think, most of all, that uh, quest for learning. Yes, that, yes, that has been the pleasure of my life, you know. Mm -hmm. So, unfortunately, we have a very limited time today, and unfortunately, we have to uh, make this wonderful time to come to an end. There would be one thing I want to add, because since I arrived here, uh, I've heard that there is a rumor mm -hmm. that uh, the movie was longer and that it was cut by the Chinese censorship. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely untrue. Okay. I uh, never planned to do a longer movie. The movie you have seen here, the movie they see in China, is exactly the same. Same that length. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a slightly longer here because there's a longer title in Chinese. Mm -hmm. Two minutes longer only for titles. Okay. It's exactly the same movie, mm -hmm. not a change. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went through um, all the regular, us usual you know, steps through uh, the, what they call the Film Bureau in uh, China. I've been entirely free from beginning to end, mm -hmm. from casting, even even though you know they uh, requested that I should meet uh, other actors, but I picked the one I wanted, mm -hmm. uh, the location. So you were given all the freedom. I was given a, an unusual, remarkable freedom. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, thank you for joining me for this incredible interview. I didn't expect it to be so wonderful. I think it's thank because you. of you, <laughs> all your experience. And thank you for sharing your thoughts about Mongolia, about Mongolian people as well. Listen, I feel so well here that uh, I hope I'll come several times, many times, and well, for longer. Very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> we will uh, wait for you uh, with the open mind and all the support you need. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. We had a great time and pleasure uh, having an interview with uh, Jean-Jacques Anon. Uh, world acclaimed uh, <laughs> film director and thank you for visiting us today. Thank you for very good questions. Thank you. <laughs>